So when I talked about priesthood yesterday, I told you the first thing you need to know about priesthood is courtesy. Because when you are dealing with spirits, there are courtesies you must obey. Spirits are legalistic beings. They are not like men. Where you run into the meeting and say, sorry, I'm late. <laughs> you will not meet them there. There is no apology in their realm. They don't know apologies. Did you know when God said, I will send my angel with you? He was talking to Moses. He said, that angel does not have mercy. So if you are begging him, you are wasting your time. The only way you can walk with spirit is to understand their laws and to obey it. And so I said, the first courtesy of priesthood is the courtesy of reverence. So when you come around the spirit, you need to honor that spirit and find out what appeals that spirit and begin to live according to it. Have you seen a man who consults a herbalist to be rich? And then he looks as if the spirit loves him so much and the spirit is blessing him until he fails to bring the yearly ritual. And suddenly he's driving on the road and he stops and becomes mad in the middle of the road. And then you are wondering, I thought this spirit loved him. <laughs> they are legalistic beings. When you violate them, they will judge you. And so a man who wants to grow by priesthood must understand reverence, the courtesy of reverence. When he comes before the Lord, he must honor him. That's why scriptures reveal to us what happens in the throne room in heaven. He said the 20 and 4 elders, day and night, they fell on their faces and they cast their crown because they must show reverence to that king to be able to bring government in the presence of that king. We are not ordinary men. The only problem is that our advantage is not on earth. That's why when we tell men to pray, we are calling them up. Come up, Ida. Come up. There are warriors waiting for you. There are mighty men waiting for you. You are not disadvantaged. You have not just met your true friends. I know all your friends are Kenyans. That's why you are where you are. It's time for you to make heavenly friends. Because Paul is still making friends. Isaiah is still making friends. Elijah is still making friends. Enoch is still making friends. But can you come to the realm of Enoch? Did you not read about Jesus? In Luke chapter 9, verse 28 and 29, he said, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. So he entered their dimension. And he said, suddenly, there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah. And they were telling him what he would do. When Jesus comes out of there, you will see one man, what is a representation of the law and the prophets. You have too much advantage to be defeated. The problem is that you have not traveled. You have not traveled. Some of you here, captured in your destiny, is partnership. Partnership with Enoch. Partnership with Moses. Partnership with Elijah. But you are still doing ministry as a single man. That's why you are defeated. Come on, Peter. That's what priesthood demands. Because if Enoch joined your team, if Moses joined your team, if Elijah joined your team, you can come to a place. Man will look at you as a boy. You will laugh at them. Because when you begin to talk, and the dimension of Elijah shows up, even their grandfather, you become older than him. Listen, hear me. You can fight anybody, but don't fight an intercessor. Don't try it. You know why? When Elijah comes, he will not obey the laws of Kenya. When Elijah comes, Elijah will come with his civilization and his age. The laws that work at his dispensation, that's what he will come with because he will bring his realm. And so, when you insult or fight that man, Elijah can kill you. In the New Testament dispensation, we don't call down fire, but in the dispensation of Elijah, they still call down fire. So when Elijah comes, Elijah is not in the New Testament. Elijah is in the Old Testament. So you may attack him and you think he's a believer and he can do nothing. But Elijah is part of his company and Elijah can still call down fire. That's why people die when they don't discern the lost body. Because they will look at you, they will think you are a weak Christian. I'm not. I'm not. Because when a man shows up, he comes with his age. Did you not read? He said, until the time of John, so if John comes, he will come with his time. And then in this generation, Christians may not be able to curse. But in the dispensation of Elijah, they curse. So if Elijah is part of your company, if somebody insults you, you can say, I forgive you. Elijah will not forgive you. Elijah can tell him, a lion will come out and destroy you. And the person will be destroyed. The reason is because in priesthood, there is interconnection. So one man fights with the strength of many. That's why when we come out, we come out with boldness. When you try me, I don't need to say anything. I go back to my altar. Kakatoa, Ragabata, Zeze, Atetetia, Susaka, Parakado, Suwa, Tatate, Eliado, Menekada. And hear me, brothers. Sometimes you don't come out with men. Sometimes.
Christ will come out with seraphims. And they are called the bunny ones. Did you read about Angel Gabriel? When he appeared to Zacharias, he said, I am Gabriel. That standeth in the presence. I brought you this glad tidings and you doubt me. He said, therefore you will be done. This is why you cannot define a believer by face value. You may be looking at a man wearing a suit. And then you came with a soldier. And you think you can subdue him. If you know what that man carries, you'll be afraid. When the army of Syria came to attack Elijah, Gehazi was afraid. And said, oh, we are besieged. Elijah laughed. He said, we have more on our side. That's a priest. We have more on our side. And what did he say? Gehazi was afraid. He now said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And suddenly, when his eyes opened, he saw that there were angels on chariots on all the mountains round about. We are not alone. When the Kakosa, Heros, the second realm of dominion is the ability to rule the systems of this world. The devil is taking advantage of the systems of the world, and the church is asleep. You go to media, they are controlling it. All your secular musicians have millions of followers. How many do you have? Because you don't have enough wisdom to manipulate the mountains. You go to the academia, they are ruling. You go to government, they are ruling. Why does our kingship not affect that realm? Because it takes a level of wisdom in priesthood to go ahead in government. It takes a level of priesthood to go ahead in the media. But we are weak. That's why you don't know what to do. There's a song God can give you. If you sing it in one month, you will become the most popular person in Kenya. But you have to travel high in the spirit to hear that sound. And when you release that sound, that sound will dominate the media. Priesthood is not just praying in tongues. If you pray in tongues and you are disobedient to God, you are joking, you will soon become a casualty. He said, until your obedience is fulfilled, you cannot avenge other disobedience. Second Corinthians 10 verse 5. So everybody who wants to grow in priesthood must begin to learn how to obey everything God tells you. The word of God to him is a law. If God tells you to do anything, you will watch out to ensure that you do it before you go forward. If you study the book of Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers, you will see the life of Moses. The Bible will say, Moses did as the law commanded him. Moses did as the law commanded him. Many people want to inherit the mantle of Moses, but they don't have the obedience of Moses. Even if that mantle is on your life, you will not have any result. Because the first thing that provokes that mantle is obedience. The Bible said Moses was perfect in all of the house of God. So priesthood, ranking, and authority is a function of obedience. We have too many disobedient Christians. That's why even though we gather in our number, we have the Jews from January to March, nothing happens. Because if our obedience is not for complete, we cannot avenge any disobedience. Meanwhile, they taught us religiously that when we pray in the VG, things will happen. How many of us have prayed and nothing happened? Have you not noticed that we have become religious in our prayers? We will gather together and say tonight, we will start praying from 12 to 3. We pray from 12 to 3 for 9 months. Nothing still happens. Because the people are done praying from 12 to 3, 8 o'clock they are disobeying God. And then they come back religiously the next day. They think it's about the prayer. They don't know the spirit is checking. Who is the person making a demand? When you come before the princes, they will ask, who is the person talking? They can tell you, Paul we know. Jesus we know. Who are you? Because they are not just demons. They are principalities. And so when a man wants to have authority in priesthood, he must build obedience until obedience becomes a memorial in the spirit. A disobedient Christian can never be a strong priest. Because the weight of a priest is a function of his consecration. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. God of They say take attendance and you are counting human heads, you will be a thousand times wrong because you think only those you are seeing here in this meeting you are not aware, you have not discerned the meeting. Is it possible that some part of your destiny you need Paul to activate it, but you have not met him? Is it possible that some part of your destiny you need Jeremiah to activate it? One of the greatest prophets in our nation went to see Pastor E.E. Adeboe. And he waited for six hours. And then you, you were a natural man, you'll be wondering, all these pastors are for me. How can you keep me for six hours? When he eventually went to meet Adeboe, Adeboe told him, I'm sorry, I was talking with Isaiah. And then when you look at the deal, you are wondering why is 
is leading him so big because it's not one man that is leading with him. Isaiah comes sometimes, Jeremiah comes sometimes, Elijah comes sometimes. That's why, even if the man is sleeping, the ministry is growing. You have lived all your life, Monday. You have lived on earth. You want to be the most popular person on Instagram. You want to be the most popular person on Facebook. But nobody knows you in the spirit. Where it matters, you are a stranger because your altar is dead. The reason we can't exercise dominion and we can't walk in our kingship right is because our priesthood is lacking. I said the second courtesy of priesthood is the courtesy are we together? Of silence. So when you come to that realm, what empowers you is not what you know. What empowers you is what you are told. So when you are done praying your prayer, you become quiet to wait for what he will tell you. Because you are powerful to the degree to which you hear. You are powerful to the degree to which you see. If he doesn't talk to you or you don't hear from him, you will go out and do try and error. And that try and error will take you to the grave. A man who hears and sees is a powerful man. But the way to hear and see in that realm is to be silenced at his feet so that he can speak to you. He said, I will stand upon my watch and I will see what he will say to me. And he said, write a vision. Make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it. So what empowers men in priesthood is the courtesy of silence. And I say, when you begin to grow in the courtesy of the priesthood, something begins to happen to you. Your rank begins to increase. And I talked to us yesterday briefly about ranking. I said the first thing about ranking is that you begin to sustain the nature of that spirit. Because as you are hearing and seeing, something is happening to you. A point will come, you discover that you begin to look like the spirit you represent. So you are not just talking on behalf of the spirit. When men see you, they will ask you, are you a man of God? Meanwhile, a man of God is not a preacher. A man of God is not a prophet. A man of God is not an apostle. A man of God is a man that visibly represents God. You are of God. That means the substance of God is smeared all over you. So you can be a singer, you can be a governor, you can be a preacher, whatever you are. When people can identify God in you, you are a, you are a man of God. So the first thing that will happen to a man who is growing in rank in priesthood is that he begins to resemble the spirit that he represents. If you don't resemble that spirit, you will speak on behalf of that spirit, it will not happen. Because the spirit is not just interested in doing things to you, he is first of all interested in you. So the degree to which he colonizes you is the degree to which you are empowered. So the first thing that confess rank in priesthood is transformation. I'm saying this because I noticed some of you were not here yesterday. Some of the things I want to share now, if I begin, you may be lost. that makes for rank in priesthood is the courts you can ascend to. When you are quoting scripture and functioning by revelation, you are at a kindergarten level. When a man truly begins to grow in priesthood, he will notice that he will be carried to places. It is what he says from those heights that confess authority on him. Nobody shaking things on earth is without journeys in the spirit. Whether in light or in darkness, before a sorcerer comes to a place and make a decree and it happens, find out there are places he travels to in the night. He's not just talking because they told him about it. He's talking because that which he has seen and heard, he declare he unto you. So when a priest begins to grow in rank, he begins to journey in the spirit. There are times when they will bring you to different courts and you will hear what they are saying about a nation. It's until you appear in that court, you can't talk about that nation. You will talk, it will not happen. Because it's not a function of coincidence. It's a function of verdicts and legislation. So a ranking priest is a priest that appears in courts in the spirit. Because when you receive eternal life, that law is activated in your spirit. That law is what we teach you that fasting is healthy for your spirit. You may never have heard that it's good to pray. But when that law begins to work, sometimes you want to go out on Saturday, that law will keep you in your room to pray for six hours. The reason is because your spirit will need that prayer to become strong. And it will take a strong spirit for you to advance kingdom. Nobody taught you anywhere, but the law of your spirit man is training you. When a man begins to grow in priesthood, the rod of his kingship begins to grow. And there are three realms of dominion. The first realm of dominion is the natural realm, where you rule over nature. You can't do that until you have a priesthood. There are three cadres in dominating the natural realm. The first cadre in the domination of natural realm is to understand the realm. It takes a wisdom that is beyond mortals to know the realm. That's why somebody can take a plant and out of that plant, he produces a cure to an incurable disease. Because there is a kingship power that gives you authority to understand nature. That's why somebody can carry metals and they can turn metals to a plane. And then you are wondering, it's a realm of kingship, but it is in priesthood that you can find that understanding. Most of the inventors of the world 
were ministers. It's the same spirit that was upon Bezalel and Oholiab. The power to understand nature. When a man begins to pray, it's not about tongues. It's about tongues. There's a place you will get to. You will tap into wisdom. And even the wind, you will know what to use the wind to do. And overnight, you become a millionaire. And people are wondering what happened. It's a realm of understanding. That's the first realm of domination. Because in kingship, you will dominate nature. In kingship, you will dominate the systems of this world. And in kingship, you will dominate the demonic realm. But in dominating the natural realm, the first layer is understanding. The second layer in dominating the natural realm is the ability to talk to nature. You don't just understand nature. Understanding nature is the lowest level of nature. There is a realm where you can talk and hear nature. That's why when Balaam's horse spoke to Balaam, Balaam was not surprised. Because it was not a new thing. When you are reading that scripture, when a donkey spoke to a man, the first thing is to explain, how come can a donkey speak? It's not new. He has been hearing and talking to the donkey. So he knows how to communicate to nature. Have you not seen Jesus? He spoke to water and water turned to wine. Does water hear? Have you not heard Moses? He said, except I'm not a man of God. The earth will open his mouth and swallow you. There are men that don't just understand nature. There's a realm where you talk to nature. And when you talk to nature, you go to the third realm of dominion where you can command nature. So in Joshua chapter 1 verse 12, he said, when Israel was fighting, Joshua stood up and said, let the sun stand upon the mountains of Gibeon. Let the moon remain upon the valley of Ajalon. And he said, the earth, the sun did not make it to go down in the day that God hacked to man. When Saul was killed, David stood up and said, cursed be the mountains of Gibeon. How were you able to stand in the day when the Lord's anointed fell? That means this man can command mountains and mountains can become weapons. Because you first understand nature, then you talk to nature and hear nature, then you can control nature. Don't people somehow read in Kenya here? In my country, there are men who can talk to the weather and it will bring water down. Those in darkness have grown, but we are still infants in light because our priesthood is weak. A realm is coming where men will send messages through the well wind. How did you think Philip was able to travel by the wind? Because he spoke to the wind and the wind became a vehicle. Men can control nature because we were commanded to rule the natural realm. That's kingship. Kingship is not you are sitting on the throne and you are using politics to manipulate 10 people. It's the ability to rule over nature. But you can't do that until your priesthood blows. If you know how many demons were stationed to ensure that you enter a pit, you will be shocked. The power that brought you here safe. That's why I said the devil come not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He said, but I am come that you may have life and life to the full. So the fatherhood of God provokes a protective dimension for everyone that calls himself his child. And then I said the third thing that God does for us as father is that he gives us access to come into his realm and to participate in his realm. And so we have understanding beyond what physics, chemistry and philosophy has taught us. You know, we're talking in the morning about mental health. And so it's natural for you to assume that mental deficiency is a product of sickness, is a product of stress, is a product of whatsoever. But when you have deeper understanding, you will know that even in medical science, that's what they call idiopathic medicine. Medicine has come to a point where they know that there are certain things they don't know the cure. They don't know the cause. Because spirits are involved. So what God wants us to do is to come into deep fellowship so that we can interact with nature from a higher end. So I know that I am not working just because I ate food. It's not ATP that makes me work. ATP provides energy, but I know it takes grace for me to work. Because if grace is withdrawn from me, even if even the food I won't be able to eat. Because the energy to eat food before energy is provided in the first place is the grace of God that's working you. So you are not working because you have ATP. The Bible said that they that are born of God, it say it's not by the will of the flesh. It's not by blood. There is a power in you that makes it possible for you to walk. There is something divine about you. And so when you come into intimacy with God, he grants you access into syllables of wisdom that cannot be captured by the mental knowledge of man. Those are the realms where access grants us. And I say when we begin to come into this realm, one of the things God will insist happens to us is that we grow from the realm of a child to the realm of a son. So when Eden was withdrawn, the only Eden that is available now is the altar. That is why spirits meet with men on the altar. The first place God designed for spirit to meet with man is called Eden. That's why God met Adam in Eden. But when Eden was withdrawn, God needed to continually meet men. So the mobile Eden that God created is called the altar. So when a man begins to engage God on the altar, it's not a religious activity. What he wants to create is to recreate Eden. 
and if he's able to create Eden on the altar, the first thing that happens is that the beings that have gone to heaven, who are now spirits, can connect with him on that altar. So when a man begins to engage priesthood, he ceases to live on earth. He begins to live in Eden. So something happens to that man. He can go to the place of prayer and suddenly Elijah can be talking to him. And when that man comes out, the man will come out with the spirit of Elijah. When you look at that man and you think this is still Paul, you have made a mistake. Because that man is no longer Paul. That man can clothe himself with Elijah. So when that man talks, the same things that Elijah commanded in his day, he can command it now. Because in priesthood, partnership beyond man is activated. When a man begins to engage the altar, a point will come, he will encounter Paul. Because this man has become spirit of just men made perfect. So when that man come out, you may say he never went to a university, but something will be at work in him. The spirit of wisdom and revelation that worked in the life of Paul, the man will enter into it. And so when that man is talking, he's not talking as a boy of 10 years. He's not talking as an ancient patriarch because the spirit of Paul will be flowing through that man. That's why when you look at people and they are operating in the spirit, you ask them, how old are you? Your question is wrong because the question is not how old are you? The question is where have you been to? Because if I have met Paul, my age is no longer a factor. When I talk, I can talk by Paul. When I talk, I can talk by Isaiah. So in priesthood, what happened? There is spiritual connectivity. So one man can become many men. Have you not seen us ministering in the service? At a point in the service, you are a teacher. At another point in that same service, you are a warrior. At another point in that same service, you are a prophet. What is happening? The men you have met in the spirit, when you are ministering, they begin to come to you. Because your priesthood has opened the radar. So at some point in the service, Elijah can walk in. And when Elijah comes in, you become a warrior. And at another point, Paul walks in. When Paul walks in, you become a revelator. At another point, Isaiah walks in and you become a prophet because priesthood have made you many men in one man. Priesthood will make you carry many spirits in one spirit because Eden is at work. When a man becomes obedient, then the mysteries of priesthood are given to that man. And I want to share with you three of those mysteries this evening. Meanwhile, what I will share now, you may never experience it in your life until you follow the things I've said earlier. Sorry I was in a rush, I had just 30 minutes. If you don't have reverence for God, if you don't submit yourself for transformation, these things I'm sharing will only make you happy, but you will not experience it. Meanwhile, your enjoying what I will share will not help Kenya. It is your doing it that will help Kenya. Are we together? If your obedience level is weak, you will not experience what I'm sharing. In fact, it may sound heretic to you. Can I share these things here? Or do I leave you to go and practice this one for the next six months? Do I allow you to practice this? You know, I said three things. Number one, transformation. Number two, what did I say? Ascending into court sessions. And then number three, what did I say? Obedience. Do I allow you to practice this or I should go forward? <laughs> Don't try this and don't talk about it until you have known it experientially. The reason is because if you say spiritual things that you don't know, you are exposing yourself in the spirit. You become a casualty. But I have to say this notwithstanding because when you say it, you bring that witness to a territory. Praise the Lord. When a man begins to grow in rank as a priest, some of the dynamics of priesthood are activated. And the first dynamic of priesthood is what we call spiritual partnership. I need to slow down so that I can explain this. Because I'm going somewhere. I want to talk about kingship. But kingship is a function of priesthood. You cannot rule until you are a priest. That's why it's a kingdom of priests. So I want to show you the technologies that men enter that makes them speak and things happen. Things don't just happen because they sound correct. In fact, it's better to know these things and not know what to say than to know what to say and not know these things. Because somebody else can say to a demon, came out, and the demon will leave. Another person can say to a demon, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you, come out of him. Nothing will happen. <laughs> it's not English language. So it's better, <laughs> it's better your English is wrong 
and your life in the spirit is correct than your life in the spirit to be wrong and you come to the public you want to speak English what we are doing is a business of spirits are we together now when a man begins to grow in priesthood and this is not what you desire this is what you grow into what happens to you is called spiritual partnership the reason spiritual partnership is possible is because the Bible said God is the God of the living and not the God of the dead that means in the realm of God men don't die hear this and follow carefully in the realm of God God men don't what die the Sadducees and the Pharisees came to Jesus arguing and they gave him a parable of a man that got married to a woman and he died and he had six other brothers and the woman was given to each of them but all of them died because of their wickedness and they asked Jesus that at the resurrection whose wife is that woman and Jesus said to them men at the resurrection are like the angels they neither marry nor are given in marriage and he went further to tell them something he said God is the God of the living and not the dead that means in the realm of God men don't die so what happens to you in priesthood is that when you begin to ascend in priesthood you are brought into the company of the spirit of just men made perfect so these men have only shifted dimensions they are not dead in the realm of God they are still alive and so what happens in priesthood is this you activate Eden Eden this is the technology of Eden the technology of Eden is so that heaven and earth is one so when you come into Eden you are not on earth and you are not in heaven the realms are connected in Eden so the things that happen in heaven can happen in Eden and the things that happen on earth can happen in Eden that's what priesthood does it doesn't just give you power over nature it gives you power over the systems of this world the time have come when Christians we rule the government Christians we rule the economy Christians we rule media because there is a wisdom when we tap into my priesthood Christianity is not just to come to church sit down and hear a good sermon they say I have made you kings and priests where is your rulership we can't see it because your priesthood is weak that's why I pity people who think priesthood is just to pray in tongues and act in a funny way when we grow in priesthood, we rule nature. We rule the systems of this world. And finally, we become gods in the demonic realm. We become gods. There are certain men that when they come out of their priesthood, even cancer knows he can't come for that meeting. Because the moment they show up, every demon of cancer will live on their own accord without talking. Without talking. The demons will go. They will go. Because of authority. Did you not know leave? It's a handkerchief and aprons. We're taken from the body of Paul. He didn't come and say the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. You don't need to call the name of Jesus to rule. The Bible didn't say you should pronounce the name of Jesus. When we say you are functioning in the name of Jesus, it means you are coming in Jesus' authority. It doesn't mean you should pronounce Jesus. Jesus came in the name of his father. Jesus never met a demon and said, in the name of my father, get out. No. He came in the name of his father. So when he looks at the demon, the demon goes. When you come in the name of Jesus, it doesn't mean you say in the name of Jesus, get out. You came in the name of Jesus. So when you look at the demon, the demon knew you came in Jesus. And there we go. That's rulership in the demonic realm. And Paul knew this so much, he didn't even need to go there himself. They took handkerchief from Paul. And when they took the handkerchief, those who were demon possessed, the demons left. Because they know where the handkerchief came from. That means when Paul cleans his face, it's not only sweat that rests on the hanky. There's an anointing that rests on the hanky. There's a power that rests on the hanky. There's a measure of God that rests on the anointing of the hanky. Because he knows what he carries. The Bible said, when Peter came out of the place of prayer, in Acts chapter 5 verse 15, it said they kept the sick, that the shadow of Peter may fall upon them. And everyone the shadow fell upon were healed. There's a man in my country called Pastor Priest Joachinome. When he enters a place, people stand up on their own accord. Because he's a God in the realm of sickness. He's a God there. That's kingship. A point is to come when a man can stand up in Kenya and say, every demon manipulating leaders, I take authority over you. Leave the government now. And they will have no choice because the man has become a ruler in the spirit. But it takes place too. I can't go beyond here. If I go beyond here, anything I say, you will call it heresy. Lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Aggressively, like someone who wants to take something tonight. Where are the 
the men that rule over nature. We are the men that rule over the systems of this world. And we are the men that rule over the demonic. You are that man. 